Hey, how's it going, sports fans? Back again, Thomas Carlson here at the Jersey City Art School. Today we're going to be talking about the human eye. So, if you haven't caught any of these lessons, this is the third of multiple lessons that we're doing for free on how to uh, appropriately study the human head. Uh, in the first class, we started with the structure. In the second class, we started, or we went into uh, the muscles of the face. So today we're gonna to focus in and specifically talk about the human eye. The human eye can be a little confusing at times, mainly because uh, you have a couple of different elements going on with light, um, where the iris is going to be lit very differently than the uh, white part of the eye, the uh, sclera. So we're gonna start right in on this and just look at a uh, side perspective, a lateral perspective of the eyeball. So. If we look at the eyeball, which is essentially a sphere, um, you have the, uh, the eyeball, which is a perfect circle, and then you have on top of that, the cornea. So the cornea sits on top and it has a little bit of a texture to it. It almost like sits on there like a contact lens. And that's important because when the eye starts looking in different directions, what you're gonna notice is that with it's looking up and is looking um, up past an eyelid, the eyelid itself will have a distortion in the form based on wherever the uh, corona uh, or the cornea is. Sorry, a mental slip there. So um, we have a, right underneath that, we have the iris, and then underneath that is the pupil. Now you'll notice the pupil I put very close to this line. And that's because the pupil and the iris exist in a cone kind of going downwards. And that's really the best way to think about it because that is going to play into what we were talking about regarding the light. So again, just quickly, we'll write this in. We've got the pupil, we've got the iris, we've got the um, cornea, And then the white part is called the sclera. Now, these are all um, important terms just for your own benefit to kind of just remember how things are broken down, especially in the sense of, of drawing. There are certain rules about if you're drawing the pupil, the edge of the pupil against the iris is going to be very sharp. And then the edge of the uh, the iris uh, against the um, cornea is going to be a little softer. So it's good to kind of remember those things when you're going into drawing um, the eyeball because uh, it's such a subtle uh, feature of the human face and it can convey so much. It's good to know best what, um, you know, what different elements uh, have which uh, design qualities. So we're going to move that off to the side and then we're gonna do a, an in-depth drawing here on looking at an eyeball in, in 3D space. So we have our sphere, and if this eye is generally looking this way, um, and this eye is generally being lit from this direction, that's gonna be helpful. Um, what you'll notice straight away is if the eye is looking um, directly at you, the viewer, it's going to basically be a perfect circle based on the iris. Um, if it's looking more in this direction though, what happens is that iris is gonna be distorted like this. It's gonna flatten similar to like an ellipse, okay? So we're gonna do that and then the pupil is going to be more uh, connected to this wall of the iris right over there. Because again, you want to think about this as being a cone. So in regards to a cone uh, or like a pitted olive, it's going to go back into the actual shape of the sphere. Um, and then on top of that, you've had, you would have your, uh, your cornea um, that is going to pick up a lot of the highlight. So put the highlight right here, maybe. Okay, so we'll smear out some of these extra lines and start developing this drawing a little bit more. So first things first, we wanna look at the, um, 
at the uh, sclera and if the light is coming down from here and we'll just shift it to there to where the uh where the highlight is the light is coming down from there and it's striking the eye right there then it's going to continue on through and your shadow is going to be perpendicular to that so if we draw like a line like this going through where this is cutting through you're going to have essentially a perpendicular line right there where it intersects and then at that point you're going to have what is referred to as the turning and that's also called the core shadow so that shadow is going to be darkest right there and then it's going to be a little darker in there now one one of the things about this we don't often see that much of a shadow on the uh on the white part of the eye only because it's being obstructed and covered by the eyelids right so if we have our if we have our shadow right there and we're looking at the iris now the iris is going to have its dark part right here where the highlight is and that's because essentially you've got the light striking this part right in here. On the on the iris. So we're going to get a little lighter as we go over there. We're going to do lines that are a little bit perpendicular here. We're going to get a little darker right around where the highlight is. Now already we're starting to get a sense of form with this that really works. Um, just lighten that up with our eraser tool and maybe just do just a little bit of value behind that just to give it a sense of contrast so we can appreciate the the true light uh, level of light with the highlight so we're already kind of getting a sense of what's going on with the eye just with uh with like these basic values so um the next step is we're really gonna focus in on uh, the eyelids themselves. So the eyelids themselves, uh, let's just put them on a different layer. They could be all sorts of different ways. I mean, you could do it like this, where you've got the eyelid lower down like this, and then they've got their eyelid open like that, you know? Um, so that's kind of almost like a fear, you know, the eye looking down, the eyelid is, uh, is kind of a, kind of creating a sense of fear. Or we could just do a more like relaxed eyeball where you've got the muscle in here. And what you really want to do is when working on this is you want to make sure that um, that you are telling yourself and know which which eye you're actually working on. I'm working on a left eye right now because I keep putting the muscle on the inside there. So I'm going to put the eye lid on top right here and then put the eyelid on bottom right here you want that eyelid to curve around the eye and you also want to absolutely make sure that you're engaging in drawing the eyelid as being something that has like some thickness to it so you may come in build it up erase it there's some thickness here and then now it's, it's kind of good to look at another side perspective of the eye. Um, and that's because if we look at a side perspective of the eye, here's the eyebrow. Then you've got the bottom of the brow facing down, the top of the eyelid, then it comes down, the actual eye itself, the bottom eyelid, the top of the, uh, of the lip kind of facing up and then down. And then we've got the cheek. So we can look at this in, in these terms and kind of build out our eye, like here's the top lid, here's the bottom lid, here's more the bottom lid. This is then coming down. So you can look at this in, in the sense of what is the plane doing? Is it facing up, down, up, this little bit's down, then you have the sphere, this is facing up, this is facing down and then this is facing up. So that's very important when you break that down because then it becomes very easy to go in 
and just define that with, well, we'll take our little pastel here and say, okay, well, this is facing down. This is the shadow of the top eyelid. This is going to be the sphere. So it's going to be a little shadow in there that's facing up. So that's going to be uh, lit up and then this is facing down. So that's going to be in shadow. So that's a really good place to start and to kind of smear that in and then develop it with the rest of the structure of the head. You know, um, the zygomatic arch we talked about in classes uh, runs sort of right into the eye, which is the cheek, which is that uh, shape of Texas that we talked about. So we may build that up right in there. The bridge of the nose is gonna be kind of on the other side. So, I mean, you know, and that can be very different based on uh, who who is your model. Um, but, you know, the eye and the shape of the eye is always kind of similar in that sense. Um, so it's very important to kind of take a, take a moment and, and think about how you're building around the sphere. Okay, so we're going to go back over here and we are going to start to implement some shadow underneath the eye. We're gonna have a little bit of a shadow right here, which is the uh, underneath the, the top eyelid. And uh, Da Vinci, what he would always kind of, he would build an eye where he wouldn't draw the eyelashes, but he would, um, he would do the shadows of the eyelashes. So we're gonna do that. That's a cast shadow. That, so that's different than the core shadow that already exists that's on the uh, Scalera. Um, smooth this out. I'm gonna go in there and kind of erase this a little bit. Erase some of that a little bit. So we're starting to get a sense of like a shape here and working with the value, which is which is handy. Um, so the next step I'm really gonna take a look at is we're gonna talk briefly about color because I think it's uh, very helpful to think in terms of color at this point. Um, so we look at our, our light source our light source, like let's say it's yellow. Um, so I'm gonna go in there and anywhere where there's light area, I'm gonna go in there and just put in a little of that yellow. So even with this, you know, we may just put a little bit in and then we kind of take our smudging tool and kind of smear it out a little bit. And where there's light, we also have some light in the eye. And then um, we're gonna take a look at that eyeball and define what color we're gonna make that eyeball. So we may go in there and say, all right, we're gonna take that and make it a deeper green. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna put that underneath uh, some of this right here. And then maybe just, um, have it so you can see that underneath. Kind of smear that out maybe. Maybe bring in some darker hues right in there. So you're starting to get an idea of like how, how, that, how that is. Um, and then we've got our yellow. So we want to put in the, the other color. So if you got our yellow right there, the absence of yellow light is going to be violet because that's its complement. So we're gonna take violet and we're gonna to go to a little bit of a neutral. We're gonna build up that and build up a little of violet in the actual shadow area that we've defined. Smear it out a little bit. Just like that. So, What's nice about working digitally um, is it kind of informs a practice that you can hopefully bring into the studio um, with more traditional paints where you're finding different ways to separate the value from the, from the light and shadow um, and the color. So the light and shadow, the color we've done, which is the yellow light, and then the absence of the yellow light would be the violet. Um, and then on top of this, we may put like a multiple layer, which is, uh, or even an overlay. And we're gonna go in there and we can then define the, the color of the skin. So no matter what color of the skin, 
it is you can go in there and kind of um uh define that first let's just do a screen maybe um there it is so and then that can be just sort of a blanket coloration of all this smear it out a little erase from areas that's important and one handy way of working with this is you can then kind of if you want because the multiply um function what it does is it allows you to layer it in but it doesn't cover it so it's letting the dark tones come through you could go in there and just click on this and bring down the opacity too so you're getting a sense of like the the different um the difference between the color of the um the actual object in this case it would be uh this person's skin and the color of the actual the color of the actual light so that can be kind of a, a very easy approach in how to build up uh, an area of, um, of of a piece with color and do it in, in a pretty pretty quick way. So um, if we're doing our eyelashes, we may go to uh, another layer and pick something that resembles eyelashes. In this case, we want to go darker. and um, do a darker pencil if you want. Now eyelashes tend to clump together on the side. They, they curl up and they tend to clump together in groups. And then you have a few that move forward like that. You got some on the bottom here. So. You know, different people have different types of eyelashes. Sometimes it's a, they're a little bit more dramatic than, than not, you know, I mean, that's, depends on the person. And then the skin, you wanna go in and, and apply some of the highlights. So we kinda went in and did some of the highlights earlier. You kinda wanna bring those same highlights into the eyeball here. Uh, the edge of the eye, you're gonna pick up a little bit of that here on the edge. Uh, down here on the eyelid and you just want to develop that as as you go so um the last thing we're going to talk about in this class is just um the eyebrow itself so the eyebrow has a bit of a shape to it um and you know we've got the structure of the eyebrow men have tend to have a little bit more of a of a distinction of the eyebrow that's a little longer and straighter a um, little fuller in here. Um, women have a little bit more of an arc and it's, their eyebrows tend to be a little bit skinnier. Um, and then that sort of also defines the, the cast of the eye where this is the kind of like acting as a hood that then goes over the rest of the eye, which you then would build up with your value, you know, however you see fit. Um, so that's coming down like this, and then that's gonna be a little darker in there. Um, and then you're gonna get your light back up here on top on the upper brow of the head and on the nose and on the cheek. So it's kind of a, another lesson for a different day, but I think uh, if you do have any questions about the eye, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, JC Art School at gmail.com. My name is Thomas Carlson. Thank you so much for joining us again uh, here at the Jersey City Art School. And if you uh, want to subscribe, that'd be very helpful. Spread the word about these free classes. Uh, we'll be cranking them out. Just uh, any feedback or any specific classes that you want to see or hear about, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. Have a good day.